Today we are going to be learning about binomial theorem. Binomial theorem allows us to take a binomial and raise it to any power. For our warm up, what I would like you to do is to take this simple binomial x plus y and raise it to the 0, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th power. When you are done, unpause the video and check your answers. If you look at your solutions, you'll notice a couple things. First of all, you probably showed a lot more work than I did for that last problem. However, I did the last problem using the binomial theorem. What our binomial theorem does is it tells us the coefficients we can expect to see for any term, and it can tell us how the exponents of each of the terms will behave. You'll notice in our term x plus y that the x exponent is largest to begin with, and the y exponent is missing. Then, as we progress through the expansion, you'll see that the powers of x decrease and the powers of y increase. And this is part of the binomial theorem. You'll also notice the exponents on, I'm sorry, the coefficients on our terms. And the coefficients are made from something called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle helps us to see the coefficients for any term of our expansion of x plus y to the nth power. So let's take a look at what Pascal's triangle is. All right, Pascal's triangle is made by starting with the number 1 and then a 1, 1. And each row of Pascal's triangle is made from adding the previous two diagonal numbers. So for example, this 1 and this 2 add to make a 3. And that's how Pascal's triangle works. So you can start filling it out in each way you just diagonally down add the numbers. So really as long as you memorize the way to create the triangle you don't have to worry about memorizing the triangle. This top row is going to correspond with our zeroth power. This is our first our squared, third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, and so on. So let's write some of this down. Notice that each row of Pascal's triangle gives the coefficient of our expansion x plus y to the nth power. We will use this along with other patterns to avoid having to multiply out these binomial expansions. All right, typically in class we would go through a discussion to see how um, how this would play out if it were expanded. So if we take a look at some different observations that we had, um, first thing that I want you to know is that our first term is going to begin with x to the n, y to the 0. And then our last term we'll have y to the 0, or x to the 0, y to the n. As you progress, the exponent on x will decrease, and the exponent on y will increase. The sum of the exponents for x and y on any term will always equal n, okay? And um, in addition to these properties of our terms, we are also going to look at our coefficients that come from our Pascal's triangle. All right, so let's look at the definition of the binomial theorem. You'll notice here in our definition, first of all, we have this summation sign, and the summation is because we're going to have a lot of terms. And the number of terms that we have will be 
um, from the zeroth to the nth term. So for example, if we're raising x plus y to the first power, we will have two terms. This vertical column is another way of writing n choose r. And basically this is going to give us a different way to generate the numbers we would normally get from Pascal's triangle. And another key point to note is that for the pth term, let r equal p minus 1. So for example, if I want the sixth term, if I want the sixth term, then r will equal 5. r is always 1 less than the number of terms that I want. And that's important because if I ask you to find just the seventh term in a binomial expansion to the tenth power, you don't want to have to write out the first six terms just to make that happen. So what we're going to do to practice using this theorem is we're going to do two examples together and then I will have you do example three on your own. And then we'll finish off looking at examples four, five, and six, how we can just find a single term within our expansion. All right, so looking at how we can do our expansion, notice in example one that the x does not have any coefficients on it versus example two, our term is 2x and our other term is y squared. We want to always raise the entire term to the power. So as you're going through and multiplying this out, since I'm raising it to the fourth power, I will know that I will have five terms. And then the way that I can figure out these terms is I'm going to do a combination of my coefficients and my terms raised to those powers. So if we look at our Pascal's triangle, the fifth row um, being raised to the fourth power has coefficients of 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So the way that that would be used here is this is going to be 1 times x to the 4th, negative 3 to the 0, plus 4, x to the 3rd, negative 3 to the 1st, plus 6, x squared, negative 3 squared, plus 4, x to the 1st, negative 3 to the 3rd, plus 1, x to the 0, negative 3 to the fourth. So notice that the powers always add up to 4. Notice that I put the negative 3 in parentheses so that way the negative sign would get properly dealt with and it would adjust the signs of the terms if needed. And then I also plugged in those coefficients from Pascal's triangle, the 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now the, po the coefficients will never be raised to powers like the terms will. So now if we simplify this, we get x to the fourth minus 12x to the third plus 54x squared minus 108x plus 81. For our second example, we are going to use 2x plus y squared all raised to the third power. Now things to note here that when we do our Pascal's triangle, we are going to use the numbers of 1, 3, 3, 1. And then when we raise each of these inside terms to a power, we are going to be raising 2x to a power and then y squared to a power. So now my expansion would look like this. 1 times 2x raised to the third and y squared to the zero plus 3 quantity 2x squared y squared to the first plus 3 2x to the first y squared squared plus 1, 2x to the 0, y squared to the third power. What I'd like you to do is pause the video. I want you to finish example 2 and then attempt example 3. Unpause the video when you're done to check your work. So this final answer would be 8x cubed 
plus 12x squared y squared plus 6xy to the fourth plus y to the sixth. So you'll notice in example one and two that in example one we had alternating signs because there was a negative value inside of our binomial expansion and you'll notice, or in front of our binomial, and you'll notice in example two that because the terms that we were expanding were not simple, such as x and y or x and three, that these numbers that we see in our final answer don't look as much like the patterns that we saw in the previous problems. Here's what your answer should look like for example four. All right, for these last couple examples, what we want to do is go ahead and find just a specific term instead of having to write out the entire binomial. So in number four, we want the fifth term. Now recall we said that the fifth term means that r is actually equal to five minus one or four. So what we're looking at here is nine choose four times x to the fifth y to the fourth. And if we multiply this out, we get 126 x to the fifth y to the fourth. If we look at example five, we want to find the middle term for this binomial. Well, if it's a, um, if it's raised to the sixth power, then that means that there will be seven terms total. The middle term will have an r equal to three because on our first term, r is equal to zero. So if we go ahead, we are looking at six choose three, square root x to the third power, and negative three root y to the third power. And if we go ahead and multiply all of this out, we will get 20 times root x raised to the third power would give us x root x and then this guy would give us negative 27 y root y and if we simplified that we would get negative 540 x y root x y. When doing problems like number five you really have to think carefully about which term you're dealing with when you are setting up the values for your uh, combination statement and your exponents. It's really important to understand that if you want the fifth term that r is actually one less um, and then remembering that our r starts with zero. So according to our summation notation, our sum summation notation went from r equaling zero up to n. So keep that in mind as you are calculating your terms. For our last problem we want to find the coefficient on the term with x to the seventh, y to the eighth for this expansion. All right, so looking at that, we want to figure out, well, what would be my um, r value in order to make this true? And we're going to be choosing 15, and it's going to be 15 choose eight. And we know that because we need to have negative x to the seventh and negative two y to the eighth. We need to be able to have these exponents here and according to the way that our definition was set up we had r equals zero to the n of n to the r times x to the n minus r power and y to the r power. So the only way that I can have a y to the eighth on a term where y starts out as y to the first is if my r value is eight. And if my r value is eight, then here, 15 minus eight would give me seven. So now that I have figured out which term I'm dealing with, I can go ahead and expand this out, and that would give me 600 or 6,435 times negative x to the seventh times 256y to the eighth, and then since I want to know the coefficient, I have to multiply all of these coefficient numbers to get negative 16, 4, 7, 3, 6, 0, x to the seventh, <coughs> excuse me, y to the eighth. So my coefficient is 
is negative 1,647,360. Thank you.